ready to do our intro? I forgot what it is. Me too. Hey guys, what's up? What up guys? It's time again for part two now of... Stories with BS. Bethany Sam. <laughs> when we last left off this story, Jonathan, our hero, built a <laughs> Jonathan wants Jonas. Had built a time machine in order, uh, accidentally, in order to eliminate snow from the world. And what has just happened to Jonathan in his hijinks? Lord Arthur has accidentally taken the time machine to the wild and woolly west. No, we're not there yet. Uh, my bad. My bad. Lord Arthur has accidentally taken the time machine and Jonathan managed to stow aboard before it went places. Jonathan and Lord Arthur arrived their head. <laughs> despite there being a comma, that's despite, how I read it. Despite there being a comma, it. we did not pause. Jonathan and Lord Arthur arrived their head spinning. <laughs> Jonathan and Arthur arrived, their heads spinning from the trip, and of course, their eyesight completely obscured by blue and purple dots. Obstructed. Obstructed. The air felt even warmer than the human castle, but... But and but, drier. But and drier. Or dustier. <laughs> Why is there a comma? Butt and drier, or, comma, dustier. Sentence. And Jonathan could feel the sun on his face as if outside, or at least in front of a window. Then he heard the gunfire. Two quick shots. Oh, I put way too many. Two, two quick shots. One right after the other, followed by a deep groan. As Jonathan's eyesight slowly came back, he saw where he was and internally groaned himself. He internally groaned himself? Oh no! You're covering the light. Well, so. I have nowhere else to go. You want a chair? Get a chair. I don't have a chair. Go get a chair. I don't know where to get a chair. Find a chair! He was in the Wild West, of course, and that didn't bode well in his mind for Lord Arthur, the deadly noble swordsman. He saw the crowd first. Well, crowd may not be the best word, since they were all spread out in different places, apparently coming out of hiding. Then Jonathan noticed the sheriff. He was walking calmly over to a slumped over man, gun in hand. The slumper... The slumper. I love that one. The slumped over figure was holding his arm. <laughs> With a, with a dropped gun to his side. Blood could be seen underneath his hand. From what Jonathan could tell, the sheriff had shot the man in the arm. And the crowd was slowly coming back out after whatever scene had just played out. The sheriff pulled the rather scruffy looking man to his feet and started leading him across the street to the sheriff's office. Jonathan took all this in within half a minute of arriving and just now glanced to his right at the... Jonathan took all this in within half a minute of arrival and just now glanced at to his right at the red time machine chair. It was empty. Frantically, Jonathan stood up quickly and looked around. He spotted Lord Arthur not far away, but walking steadily to catch up with the sheriff. That can't be good, Jonathan thought. Just as the sheriff led the man inside to the sheriff's office, Lord Arthur arrived at the front steps of the door and without hesitation, he stepped inside. Oh dear, Jonathan said aloud as he jogged after them. He heard a surprise shout from inside, followed by angry ones. Then he made it to the steps and hopped up them to the door. Hopped up them. To the door. <laughs> the cell door shut with a loud clang as Jonathan pushed open the door. These bars shall not hold me! Jonathan heard Lord, Ar Lord Arthur shout. I seek only peace for my city. Listen, I don't know who you are or what you're doing, but you better put that sword away before I have to shoot you. Came the reply shout from the sheriff. The sheriff was standing with his gun ready and pointed at Lord Arthur. The other was standing sword drawn in a cell. A second cell held the other man who was laying on the cot still holding his arm and slightly moaning. When Jonathan came in, the sheriff heard him and sw swirled around, his gun following the motion that ended pointing at Jonathan. Who in the misty mountains are you? The sheriff didn't seem to know what to do, but he wasn't about to take any chances. Before Jonathan could even get a word out, the sheriff had grabbed him by the arm and thrown him inside the second jail cell. Wearily, Jonathan <laughs> looked at the scruffy fellow in the same cell on the cot. He wished the sheriff had put him in Lord Arthur's cell, but it made sense not to fiddle with the sword. Just then a man came into the sheriff's office wearing a deputy badge and a frantic expression that matched that of the sheriff's. Sheriff! He gasped. There are two strangers- Don't read, he gasped. That's me. Oh, sorry. Those two strangers- No, 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 start over. Sheriff! He gasped. Those two strangers he got in the cell appeared on a big old chair sitting there in the middle of the street. And the townspeople are getting all upset over it. What do we do with it? The sheriff turned his wide, bewildered eyes, first in the direction of the sword, then at Jonathan, then out the window at the small, confused riot taking place round the odd chair. After a moment, a change appeared in his face, and he took charge again. James, obtain that blasted sword, he commanded. Then bring the doctor to tend to old Jed. He gestured out over to the man on the cot. Then wait here for me, I'll attend to the chair. Then he walked out the door, leaving the deputy to deal with Lord Arthur and his sword. It took a couple of intense minutes, but with Jonathan's help, the deputy was finally able to coax the sword away from jo Lord Arthur. George Arthur. Though much to Lord Arthur's dismay. The deputy, not knowing what else to do with it, 
propped the sword against the far corner just as the sheriff returned with the doctor. A bit of relief was notable on the sheriff's face when he saw Lord Arthur did not have his sword anymore. I've only now just noticed you have absolutely zero female <clears throat> characters. That's true. <laughs> then he shut the door and took a slow, deep breath. All right, he said. He said. Sorry. Deputy James, help me move the stranger to the cell with his friend. Then the doctor can attend to the patient while we try and make sense of whatever crazy story these two circus clans make up. With that, the three men got to work, and Jonathan found himself standing next to Lord Arthur, trying desperately to explain their appearance. Lord Arthur didn't help much. Eventually, both the sheriff and deputy gave up trying to make sense of it, and determined it was all a lie to cover some elaborate crime. They're getting thrown in the loony bin. So both Lord Arthur and Jonathan got to spend the night there in the jail cell. <laughs> John We're gonna clarify? Jail cell, as in verb. We're gonna sell this jail. <sighs> Jonathan lay there that night, trying to calm the sense that his life was over, now realizing, to his great dismay, just how terrible this idea had been. On the bright side, old Judd was just fine, and Jonathan assumed quite comfortable because he was snoring as loud as a bus, or prairie wagon, as it were. The next morning, the sheriff told Jonathan and Lord Arthur that they would be explaining their mess of an alibi to the circuit judge, who would be riding in tomorrow morning. So just like that, Jonathan was forced to spend all day in jail with nothing to do but think and think he did. Jonathan and... <laughs> that was should, not well read. Should have paused. Jonathan had an idea. He had been able to see out the window yesterday that the sheriff had put the time machine in the town hall for the time being. You know, I feel like at this point Jonathan's just flattering himself. Like, it's, it's straight up just a chair. But he keeps wanting to call it a time machine. It's like, it's a, no, it's a machine, no, it's you a guys. it's a machine, you guys. He figured maybe he could help Lord Arthur out. Maybe he could actually go back to just before the king was assassinated and save him. Maybe he could fix everything and go back to his own time. And maybe he could get out of this cell. But his thinking was for nothing. Because try as he might, he couldn't come up with any way of getting out of this crumbly, crumby, cr crumby? Well, it was actually quite a nice jail cell. The day passed uneventfully. Jonathan was by this time very bored and very tired of thinking up new ideas. And he was also very tired of Lord Arthur's rants. Starting that morning, Lord Arthur had ranted at the top of his lungs for what seemed like hours on end. Then, exhausted from the effort, would crash for an hour on his bunk like a child taking an afternoon nap. This would have been more comical had Jonathan not felt so utterly helpless in escaping old, uh, That's the, period. The period. <laughs> old Judd had slept a lot of the day too and looked much stronger than the day before. As the last ray of sunshine fell below the horizon, it drug with it Jonathan's hope of the escape. Aggravated and disappointed in himself, he gave up and lay in his bunk and listened to Lord Arthur's rant again. The sheriff had long since left them alone after maybe the third or fourth rant and now came back to check on us before going to his house for the night. Y'all are gonna get one more chance to defend yourselves tomorrow. I'd suggest you both get on the same page about what you're gonna say. With a sigh, odd advice for a sheriff. I know, right? With a sigh, Jonathan watched him put the keys on the far wall and leave the room. Nothing to do now but sleep. Tonight he found it much easier to get to sleep without the snoring of old Judd. But wait a minute, you say. What happened to old Judd? In answer to that, I say, nothing. Old Judd was still there in his cell, but for some reason he wasn't sleeping. In fact, he never went to sleep because old Judd was in fact dead. Next paragraph. Nope, gotcha. He wasn't dead. I was just seeing if you were still paying attention. This time the narrator actually got me. I f that's a very Sam thing to do, to just kill the character. Just, just kill the just character, man. Just make him dead. Well, he wasn't an important character. Also, you didn't capitalize. Why is gotcha. your hand on my chair? Uh... He wasn't sleeping because he was staring out the window. This may or may not seem an oddity to imagine, but regardless, Jonathan didn't think it odd when he found himself slipping into slumber. He did, however, find it odd when he awoke to the sound of the jail cell door being opened slowly and as quietly as possible. Through the haze of half-consciousness, he saw a man stooped over his face. An unshaved beard and hard eyes were what stared back at Jonathan. He held this pose for only a second, and then an expression of confusion warped his features. Starting backwards a little, the man looked around and stared speechless at the two of their bunks, Lord Arthur having just then awoken. A moment later, a soft call was heard from the other cell. Billy, you goosehead! Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> they heard old Judd saying, I am in this cell! <laughs> just then, three things happened all at the same time. The man called Billy realized his mistake and started to turn around. Lord Arthur sat up and made an unintelligible exclamation, and Jonathan found himself fully awake and realizing that their hope of escape had just wandered in and was about to leave. A split second later, Jonathan drove to... A split a, a split second later, Jonathan dr Dove. A split second later, Jonathan dr Oh my goodness. <laughs> a split gets You can't script this. A, 
A split second later, Jonathan dove to catch the cell door as it swung shut after Billy. <laughs> Catching it just in time, he and Lord Arthur sl stumbled out. Lord Arthur, still not fully awake, was quite understandably confused and started inquiring at a volume much louder than Jonathan wanted to hear at the time. What hath occurred, young magician? He asked. And whom is this ruffian in front of mine eyes? Shh! came the response from three voices in unison. All four people found themselves staring at each other in the middle of the main room as still as statues. All that moved were their eyes. Then, suddenly, Lord Arthur sprung towards his sword, and in reaction, Billy reached for his gun. Jonathan lunged for the gun hand as it was brought back up with a gun. This act completed the confusion as everyone started moving at once and yelled as quietly as they could in silent screams of anger. Lord Arthur with his sword and Billy with his gun both proved useless as arms flying everywhere threw aim out of the question. Jonathan felt an elbow to the chin and a knee to the hip and just managed to hang on to Billy's firing arm and old Judd's face. The commotion lasted a few minutes until they all, as one big glob, toppled through the open doorway and down the steps to the street. Rolling around, Jonathan heard three gunshots and worried about where the bullets ended up. Soon, they all separated on the ground and at once got up and checked for bullet holes. Finding none between the four of them, they all gave a sigh of relief and started chuckling like a group of close friends. A second later, a small crowd of townspeople came around. These townspeople are just waiting outside their <laughs> doors for excitement. And we've established this is late at night. Came around the corner to see the commotion. One yelled, Get the sheriff! And another left in response. With that, the two outlaws turned and ran around the corner to the building in terror, only to reappear on horses that Billy had apparently brought. Jonathan and Lord Arthur watched as they galloped off in the opposite direction that the town man, that the town's man, oh, that the townsman had gone to get the sheriff. <laughs> the town's man. The, the town owns that the man. man. The town <laughs> owns that man. man. Without waiting much longer, Jonathan pulled Lord Arthur towards Town Hall as the town people watched from a distance. This part of the plan, Jonathan had thought through quite well. Without losing a moment, Jonathan had left Lord Arthur on the front steps as he climbed the moonlit brick wall to a very small window on the side, having assumed, of course, that the front would be locked. Then, barely slipping through, he landed inside and unlocked the door for Lord Jonathan. Lord Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a break? No, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> and told him to block the door with anything heavy. As he reached the chair, he heard the banging at the door. The sheriff had arrived, but thankfully, Lord Arthur threw a bookshelf over it. <laughs> As you do. He's just... Boom. And Jonathan had enough time to actually program in where he wanted to go this time, instead of being whisked away to anywhere. This took him less time than he thought it would, and thankfully so. Because just as he signaled Lord Arthur to come over, the sheriff broke a floor-level window and was climbing in after them. Jonathan had to shield his face from shards of flying glass as the sheriff took the first step towards them. Then, as Lord Arthur reached the chair, Jonathan hit the red button and yelled, Close your eyes! And they were off, hopefully back to the same time that they had come from. This time, the colors shined dimmer from the outside of Jonathan's eyelids as they moved back through time. I hadn't till now mentioned the roller coaster ride that the time machine actually felt like. Now, with the... Bethany. Roller coaster ride. Uh, now, with the eye thing no longer a problem, Jonathan felt the gut wrenching much more intensely than before. The location they had been sent had actually been right where Jonathan had wanted, in the same bedchamber that Lord Arthur had first taken Jonathan to, and presumably a few minutes prior to when they had left. With a sigh of <laughs> relief, Jonathan fell over and embraced the ground. Then. Then quickly got up because he saw a rat scurrying under the bed. We have made it, my odd magician! Exclaimed Lord Arthur. Then, without pausing another moment, he promptly began hitting all of the buttons again. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop! For pity's sake, cried Jonathan. I'll help you, okay? But at least give me a, a moment to catch my breath. Very well, my friend. Was all Lord Arthur said. Lord Arthur has no concept of energy loss. He literally screamed for an entire day and <laughs> night, traveled through time twice, and he, he, he immediately like, let's do it again! Jonathan started thinking of a plan, a brilliant plan, to save our Lord Arthur's king, whose name Jonathan realized was not yet mentioned. He later found out it was Boris. <laughs> Good job, Sam. <laughs> After several minutes, they both got up. Okay, Lord Arthur, Jonathan said. It's time to come up with a plan. And so the two of them spent the next several hours explaining things to the men in the banquet hall, hatching a long, drawn-out, beautifully bril brilliant plan of action to save King Boris. So now we're just straight up going to intentionally change the timeline. And also, in, our, in order to do that, we have to explain this to a banquet hall full of buffoons who are somehow grasping the idea of time travel. 
Sometimes I see how small I can get my mouth. <laughs> the night King Boris was murdered, he and his guards were found dead by his servants. Shortly after that, it was realized that the West Gate guards had been taken out and the west side of the city was being infiltrated by enemy troops, thus starting the great battle which led to the near destruction of the entire city. Jonathan and Lord Arthur decided to go back to dusk and, well, sure, I could, uh, I could bore you with the rest of the details of the plan because I didn't feel like writing them. I could bore you with the tales of how we'll save, save yeah. Boris. I, Intrigue was, and... I was making a bore Boris pun. Ah. How you save Boris? Well done. But trust me, just it puns. will save a lot of time if I just tell you what happened. Yeah, that, straight up, I, I'm rereading one of the books I wrote when I was 11, and I have two different fight scenes where straight up I describe what I'm doing by saying I was doing kicks, slides, punches, dodges, and just, we're just inferring my character was like, doing all oh, that. Because I don't, don't want to explain like coming it. Up with these details. I don't want to make, what am I, a choreographer? The group of men waited a couple more hours as Jonathan made some temporary upgrades to the time machine in order to accommodate for a larger group of people. That seems like a massive upgrade that he did in a couple of hours. It literally was just a chair. After that was completed, the slew of about 40 men... Slew? 40 men?! <laughs> After that was completed, the slew of about 40 men and Jonathan set out to save the future of their kingdom. 41 chairs. I like to think he literally just took their long banquet hall, attached the chair attached to the it, chairs and by then told them, all, told them all to sit on the table like Vikings in a boat. Yeah. <laughs> they arrived fully arrayed in battle armor and rep weaponry with shouts of war. The meat. Shouts of war? You're in your own city. <laughs> <laughs> with shouts of war to meet what must have been the mass of enemy troops infiltrating the castle. Their shouts quickly dissipated when they realized they were right beside the throne in the throne room. <laughs> <laughs> they were scaring King... <laughs> and they were scaring King Boris half to death. <laughs> and they were scaring King Boris half to death. <laughs> not to mention, there were no enemies in the throne room yet. All was still quiet. The king had not yet gone to bed. Just imagine, you're King Boris, you're just sitting. <laughs> <laughs> so having this free time on their hands, Jonathan and Lord Arthur got the men in place and quickly explained to the king the unbelievable tale of what they were doing there. Jonathan let Lord Arthur explain it as a magic thing instead of trying to explain a time machine to a medieval king. It took more time than expected for anyone to show up, but when they did, it was not what they had anticipated. In fact, this was why I didn't go into details of the plot. It turns out that, the, that they oh, were- Oh, this is why. It, this is why. <laughs> it turns out that they were way overprepared and that the king's murderer was actually just a handful of enemy spies who had stealthily uh, killed all of the guards one by one on their way to the throne room. And after entering the room, they were quickly cut down by the allied troops uh, positioned in hiding throughout the room. It would have been much better if instead of a small ambush group, it had just been like one scorned lover. But... <laughs> no, what, what would have been really funny is if it had been like the handmaid who was like coming in for something for the king and just stabbed him and they were like, Oh, it was her. Ah, <laughs> Jonathan moaned. I didn't even get to use my makeshift flamethrower. <sighs> Not only that, but the group of armed allies didn't get to use any of the big guns, as it were, and none of the detailed plan was of use. But having eradicated the threat to the king, they sent messages to the west gate of a coming assault, then departed back to the future. They would have stayed to help in the battle, but if one of the men would have bumped into one of their past selves, it would have messed with the whole time-space continuum thing that everyone knows about, but no one understands. Upon their return, they were greeted by loud music and a large mass of people who were all in celebration of the victory. Jonathan knew it would probably take a while after the party to explain what happened to the crowd, but luckily he didn't have to be the one to do it. As Jonathan sat down on the machine, he looked for Lord Arthur. When he, was spot when he spotted him, he waved goodbye. Lord Arthur bowed in response, then was lost in the crowd. Jonathan was content with his farewell and itching to finally go home and have food from his own time period. He remembered a microwave burrito in the freezer that was calling his name, and so he adjusted the settings and sent himself back to his future time. When he arrived, Jonathan let out a sigh. Then after his stomach settled, he again felt the hunger and went upstairs for the burrito. He had learned a valuable lesson that day. Huh. Always remember to carry his twos. And also that getting rid of the snow was still apparently a fictional idea. After lunch, he planned on dismantling the time machine because of its danger. He didn't care about the snow problem anymore. He was just glad to be home and relieved that the changes he made to history had not made catastrophic changes to the future, as it probably was. No, have. a guy just completely got unmurdered. No uh, changes to history there. That is, until he opened the freezer and couldn't find his burrito. In a panic, he quickly did some calculations and eventually figured out that the two outlaws he let escape in the Wild West, again, not even not something even that him. was his fault. Not even the one thing that wasn't his fault, the thing that was gonna happen, 
As opposed to all the all right, all right, all right. Let me tell my story. The two outlaws he let escape in the Wild West had caused a ripple effect and to eventually prevent the invention of the microwave burrito. That was something Jonathan simply could not stand for. So with determination, he headed back to the garage to change his fate, and he adjusted the setting of time and place on the machine. He declared, uh, it's a good thing I haven't gotten rid of this time machine yet. The what a, end. What a, what a inspiring final line. You know what? It's okay. Because what really happened was the not murder of King Boris is what resulted in microwave burritos never being invented. But he just forgot to Jonathan carry the forgot. <laughs> Oh no, I stole your joke. You stole my thunder. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Wow. Oh, this is so. Sad. Ready? We're gonna say the end at the same time. The end. How did I? I rate these things right on a scale of one to ten pages. Two. So on a scale of one to ten pages, I would rate that. Uh, I'd rate it on the third page. Yee yee. Yee. See y'all next time. <laughs>